when we have a moment of, could we live somewhere else? We always come back to, but there's no arbor anywhere else. The minute we walked in the school, we felt that special energy, that sort of special arborness. I don't wouldn't know how else to describe it. And we were blown away the first time we went into a classroom. And my husband and I left thinking, we don't need to look at any other schools. That's the one. Having been around for as long as it has, I think there's a there's just a confidence there. You have to have been doing something really well to have lasted as long in the Atlanta private school market as Arbor has as a Montessori school. So Arbor was founded in 1970 by 10 brand new, newly minted AMI Montessori trained teachers. And they wanted to support the children of the Montessori community here in Atlanta. There weren't that many schools at the time, so they decided to come together and come up with what we now know to be Montessori Child Development Center. After about 10 or 12 years, they realized they needed to be in the same space. So they went looking for property, and what we now have as our La Vista campus was the place that they found. And because of all the beautiful trees, they named it Arbor Montessori School. We were founded by women who had a deep commitment to Montessori education. So over 50 years ago, when they came together to start Arbor, they had a commitment to holding to the purest form of Montessori, as well as the ability to work together in community. And when you have a teacher-led school, you have at its core the Montessori principle, and the Montessori principle being that the child is the center of our school. It is what is best for that child, and we will always hold that vision, and that is what makes us unique. The toddler class, like every other classroom in a Montessori program, is designed for that age. So what do children need at that age? They need to know how to be part of a community, how to give, how to take, how to navigate those social interactions. It is a multi-edge classroom from 18 months to three years. And everything in the, in the toddler classroom is geared towards fostering, and fostering independence. Children want to be independent. And if we give them the opportunity to do it and set it up for success, like giving them small pitchers for milk instead of a whole gallon of milk, they are able to do it for themselves. So those opportunities that we give for them to develop independence is very different from a typical preschool. But it looks like magic when you go into a classroom and you see two-year-olds, three-year-olds interacting together, working independently on their lessons, choosing a lesson, cleaning it up, putting it away, pushing in their chairs, and you just have to see it to believe it, and to believe that your child can be in that classroom doing that same thing, and then just imagining the changes that can happen at home when that's what they have during the day. It's really exciting. What we are watching to see is how their focus and concentration develop. It's really hard for a two-year-old to sit still for more than two minutes anywhere, but when they are doing an activity like baking, they can stay focused for 30 minutes in one place, totally focused. And the skills that they learn with the fine motor skills, the focus, the concentration, helps them do the academic part of the program in primary, the language, the math, much better because they are able to sit still and finish that. When they move to lower elementary, upper elementary in AP, that becomes is so much a part of their personality, they just carry it through, um, right through college and right through their workplaces. Dr. Mantasari said since children between ages three and six are sensorial learners, so they learn how to identify through their senses. And they learn best when they are touching and feeling. Like if they are touching uh, a unit, small unit and a thousand cube, they see the difference between a thousand and a unit. And they know, okay, a unit is small, a thousand is big and heavy. So that, that sensorial experience helps them much more than if they see a one and a thousand written down on a piece of paper. The materials are beautifully designed for just that, whether it's language development, math development, practical life development, development of independence, 
it's all in those materials that they are touching. They are with the teachers for three years. So it gives children an opportunity to go from being the youngest in the classroom to the oldest and the leaders in the classroom, from receiving help when they were young to giving help when they are older. And that those qualities help them as they grow forward into lower elementary and AP and beyond. It also helps them observe the lessons that the older children are doing. So when it is their turn to do the lesson, they already have a basic understanding of what they're getting into. So they set goals for themselves and then they learn how to reach those goals because they're watching the older children do lessons that are very interesting to them. The teacher is not standing in a blackboard and telling them what things are. She gives them the materials and allows them to explore and learn from those. So when they do that, that information becomes their own and they don't forget it. So that skill is something we want them to carry on because then they start enjoying learning. They, they become what we call lifelong learners and that's what we want them to do. That learning is not a chore, it becomes fun and they carry that love of learning right through. The Montessori curriculum at the elementary level is one that carries on from the primary in the sense that it starts with very concrete manipulatives and work and lessons that really let the children use their hands to connect it into the mind. And through the elementary curriculum, you'll see this passage into abstraction, which as they grow and develop, so not only do these lessons that they have learned to work with with their hands, but they start becoming of the mind and remembering, just for an example, math facts would be something that many of us in our education, we just memorized. Our children have had the experience of touching these quantities, of taking these of borrowing, of exchanging, so that when it becomes abstract in their mind, there's a true understanding of what they're doing. And that's across all curriculum areas in the elementary. And as a parent, when you, when you have your child in the elementary program, you will see that the teachers and the materials connect to the children in a way that answers their developmental needs. So we take this very gregarious social child and our lessons and our academics and the, just the setup of the classroom are completely designed to, to foster their strength and their independence. And, and really they, they come away with the idea that they can really do anything. They can solve problems. They can think deeply. They can love learning. And I think that's one of the absolute hallmarks of a Montessori education is our children love learning. They are not encumbered by standardized tests or worksheets or, or any of the traditional trappings. They are allowed to really seek information, to dive deep into subjects. And we cultivate that. And through that is the process of loving to learn. The first time you come into the Arbor Adolescent Program, you'll notice that it doesn't look a lot like your traditional middle school. We have one huge space where all of our students, seventh and eighth grade, come together. Um, we cover your basic sort of core subjects that you might expect to find in middle school. We have math, we have English language, we have Spanish, um, but we also have integrated studies of sciences and histories combined with practical work. Our students learn chemistry and biology, but they learn chemistry by making soap and cooking in the kitchen, and they learn biology out with our, our chickens and our bees that our students run. Our students also run their own businesses at Arbor. It's really a hallmark of our program. Um, they actually have to submit job applications and they get leadership roles as eighth years that they carry throughout the year. And they run these businesses, they make them prosper, they take care of the chickens, they take care of our gardens or our bees or our watershed. Um, and so a lot of work happens and a lot of it is very intentional, real, practical work. I think it's I think it's very uh, the, the Montessori way really helps um, really helps you give a learn a lot more about your uh, about how to manage your work and how um, and how to manage your time um, and it's it's really helpful in um, uh, in actually developing your skills uh, outside of the simple um, learning concepts or whatnot. I think that the community that we've created 
that is just so strong and the bond that the students have is unbreakable. And I think that's what makes it different. When our students graduate, we take very seriously the sort of Arbor motto of go here, then go anywhere. And we want our students to be prepared for any high school experience uh, that they might choose. We have students go to every school in the area, public, private, religious, boarding schools, and I think they all do really well there. Our students leave here not only academically prepared, but confident in themselves. They know how to talk to adults, they know how to advocate for themselves, uh, and they know how to work within a real community. Arbor has been around for 50 years, so we've had lots of time to build a community. What's most special to me is being able to see a generation of children go through the school. Right now I have a little boy in the classroom whose parents went to Arbor and to see them come back and have their child experiencing the same lessons that they had has been pretty amazing. I think we just always kind of knew it's what we wanted just because we we both had such good experiences here. Like not only are they our memories, like thinking about that like our kids are going to get those memories. And for me, like that's one of the like most special things that like we can share um, as parents. My very first day was probably two weeks after Hurricane Katrina. You know, I was welcomed in with open arms and you know, it was, turned out to be an awesome decision in the end. <laughs> we were all really, or the class was really into the relief fund and relief efforts and kind of helping out with that. So of course that was, you know, a personal, <laughs> something that I was personally able to relate to. Being able to kind of jump in and help out with that was a way that I could kind of, you know, get to know my classmates better and uh, you know feel more welcomed in and start to get more comfortable being at Arbor. Aside from just wanting to repeat my life for my daughter <laughs> because I had a, a fantastic academic life here, I know that she will be fostered in whichever direction she goes and I know that she'll have an experience where she'll be excited about some kind of content or topic or method and that some teacher will see that and encourage that, you know, fan that flame. And those are the moments I'm so excited for Madeira to have at Arbor. You think about it in an immediate way. You can go to any high school, you can go to any college, you're prepared for any of those next academic things, but you're also prepared for life. And that's, uh, that's an unbelievably gratifying concept as a parent. I just want children to fall in love with learning and to value what they can get from a book, from each other, from having conversations with other people. And if they can love learning, if they can become good problem solvers, they're gonna be set for the rest of their lives.